look like this in 1955. Hi, I'm Eric Morton. And it was in an Anaheim orange grove, just like this, that Walt Disney created a collection of mountains that would attract over 300 million visitors. The mountain range of Disneyland. Come on, let's go climbing. You know, for many people, what remains their most vivid memory of Disneyland is the contest of the car on the way there. It seemed to be the first to spot the top of the Matterhorn. But not many people know the real origin of this attraction. Walt Disney used to vacation in Switzerland, and in 1959, he produced a feature film shot at a location there called Third Man on the Mountain. And although the movie's treacherous peak was referred to as the Citadel, you can tell it's none other than the Matterhorn. And later that same year, Walt began construction at Disneyland on a replica of the Matterhorn, a 1 100th scale model, complete with a thrilling bobsled ride. I'm at the base of Disneyland's most popular mountain, the Matterhorn. And with me are three guys who climb it. Keith, Steve, and Pat. How are you guys? Good, how are you? Keith, what's the technique to scaling this mountain? Well, there's usually two, two climbers. Uh, one is the lead climber, one follows, and they place gear all the way up for safety, and then the follow climber just cleans up the gear as the lead climber belays the first climber up. Steve, what's the difference between climbing this and a real mountain? Well, it's the same as climbing anywhere, really. There's no, you know, fake handholds or built-in steps or anything. It's real climbing. Um, the only difference is that the surface is painted, so it's a little slippery than regular rock, but that's about it. Pat, how do you get down? Well, we fix the rope at the very top. Um, it's a single 11 millimeter line that's thrown down, and we put a big knot on the end of it so we don't actually repel off the end of it. We've got this device called a figure eight that we clip the rope through, and it's a friction device. It runs pr pretty much on friction, and you just repel down, lean back, and just sort of walk down the mountain. My next summit was Space Mountain, so I talked to the senior vice president of Walt Disney Imagineering, John Hench. John, you've been involved with Disneyland from the very beginning. Tell us how Space Mountain came to be. Well, it didn't just happen overnight. Was it called Space Mountain in the beginning? No, that name kind of be associated with it because it started to look like a mountain. This ride was built in 1976. Now, most people don't know that Walt was actually involved from the very beginning, but he certainly was. He was in the planning for a long time, wasn't he? Oh, indeed, yes. Well, I think that the first time I heard about it was in 65. What was the very beginning? Did Walt call you and say, I've got this great idea for a roller coaster inside in the dark about space? Yes, he did. I suppose he'd uh, had some experience with the Matterhorn. I think that he decided that if we somehow enclosed the whole thing, we could control all the lighting. We'd get more effects out of it. Yeah. What is so amazing about it being dark inside? Well, you cannot see where you're going, for one thing. You know whether you're turning right or left. You seem to be floating in actual space. What's remarkable is the drawings you did back in 65 look just like the place is today. Oh, yes. It turned out very much the same. The next Disneyland mountain off the drawing board of the Imagineers came in 1979. For the scoop on Big Thunder Mountain, I talked with Tony Baxter. Tony, what's the story of Big Thunder? Well, when Disneyland opened, there was a, an attraction called Rainbow Ridge, and it had a ride in it called the Rainbow Mountain Mine Ride. And in 1960, Walt expanded that to become Nature's Wonderland, which had pack mules and, and uh, the train through Beaver Valley and Nature's Wonderland. And in 1977, we bid goodbye to all of that and began constructing Big Thunder Mountain, which opened in 1979. Every attraction has a theme. What's this theme? But this one married into the Wild West of the Gold Rush era, into Frontierland, so it was a fairly logical fit. We were able to save some of the old mining town over there from uh, the Rainbow Ridge area of Nature's Wonderland. So there's some old and new mixed together in this one. Now, be honest with me. Do you ever come out here and just ride like Absolutely. a kid? Absolutely. That's what I was doing that last Friday night on this one. As a matter of fact, they let us go around twice. And it's really an out-of-control mine ride through bat-infested caves and phosphorescent pools and finally climaxing in a giant earthquake inside the center of the, the mine itself. Well, you know, Eric, you've covered just about all the important mountains in Disneyland, but there is another hidden one that people really don't know about. 
Before Big Thunder Mountain was open, there was a part of the Nature's Wonderland, and, and it included a mountain called Cascade Peak, and it's still here. You can catch it if you ride the Mark Twain. On the front side, though, you'll be able to see something else that's kind of special. We took the last train car from the old Nature's Wonderland mine train ride and parked it out there in kind of a crashed condition as the uh, avalanche came down off the side of Cascade Peak. So the next time you're out and ride the Mark Twain ride, take a look for the uh, last of Nature's Wonderland. Cascade Peak may have the most waterfalls of all the Disneyland mountains, but there's another one that holds the record for getting people wet. The tallest, steepest, fastest log flume ride in the world, Splash Mountain. But there's more to this mountain than just the drop. In the beginning, Splash Mountain didn't look much like a mountain. It kind of looked more like a hole. But after nearly 22 months of construction, topped off by some final landscaping touches, this log ride, inspired by the Disney film Song of the South, was ready to go. How do you do? Body plays greeting. How do you do? Say it when you're meeting. How do you do? With everyone repeating. Pretty good shows you want. Over 100 audio animatronic characters from the America Sings attraction were relocated to their new home, where they perform atop the largest animated prop ever built. After seeing what went into making Splash Mountain, I just might have to take the plunge myself. Fall on a hill? Hey, hey! Hey, we're wet already! Himalayas.